Hello lovely people, welcome back to Proformance and in this episode today we are looking at the Pro 1200 display on an AFS Connect tractor. What we're going to do is have a quick overview of the display and its operations and little comparisons for the Pro 700 in terms of menus. What I'm hoping you take away from today's video is not just how advanced the screen is, that will be covered in upcoming episodes, but how easy it is to operate and get around. I'll spin you around, let's take a look at the Pro 1200 display. Right then guys and girls, let's have a look at the Pro 1200 display and what it has to offer. So this is a quick overview, going around the screen, just explaining the menus and quickly what's in them. What we'll do is start off with the very top left hand side of the screen, which is the basically the errors notification area. As you can see, if one's lit up, not grey, so you can see there we've got a quick error with the exclamation mark. If the stop one shouts at us, basically it goes red. Shouts as it tells us to stop the tractor, that means there's a catastrophic failure with the tractor or a sensor. The next one along is basically just some small errors, so if uh, if something's not on. For example, let me show you, if we click on the yellow one because it's lit up, brings us straight to the faults and warnings page and we can see there, look, FGNSS-100 comes up, which basically means we've got no communication with the receiver. That is simply because it's locked away in our cabinet. Moving along, we've got the grey arrow facing upwards, which is our work control. So in that current position, it is in the out of work position. If it's a green arrow facing downwards, then it is in the in work position and we'll record coverage. Moving across, we've got our little icon of a satellite. And this is all the information with regards to the GPS system. As you can see there, look, it's got a red exclamation mark and an error. Again, that's because we've not actually got the receiver on. Um, as a quick comparison, if you were going to the Pro 700 display, it would be in the toolbox and across the bottom to GPS and Nav S and Nav P settings, and also some little bits in the diagnostics and RDI screen. Moving across, we've got our telematics icon, which gives us all the information in regards to the PNCM, which is the modem with the SIM card in it, which relays all the telematics services back to the computer. Next one along, we have the applications icon, which basically in here you've got the gallery where there's photos, you can set your phone up, add or remove mobile phones, and then we've got the radio icon where you can use a radio instead of reaching above your head on the column. There's remote assistance services in there, and also you can update the tractor within this part of the display as well. Next one along, which is one of my favourites, is the question mark icon, and this brings up a whole load of manuals for you to have a look at, so you can see here, We've got, for example, receiver operator manual and tractor operator manual. To give you a quick idea of how many pages and information are within it, if we open up the software operating guide, we can see in there that we've got 542 pages. So there's loads of information in terms of manual contents and stuff like that within the display. So if you don't know how to do something, you could always have a quick look in there before, before we move them. Lovely. Um, moving across, we've got our little profile picture and in here we can set up different user profiles. So a quick example of this is if we had somebody working on the farm who was slightly harder of hearing compared to, uh, to somebody else, is we could set them up a profile in here where the volume is turned right up and then another profile for the other users where they don't need the volume so high. So yeah, you can set up loads of different user profiles in there for all sorts of different things. Moving across, we've got the little speedometer icon, which brings up all the sensors of the tractor that are currently being used. So in there you can see the engine power is zero, we've got pretty much the engine off, so there's not a lot happening in there. But yes, this is comparable to going into performance in the Pro 700 and to instant, where you bring up a lot of instant information. So while you're driving, while you're working, there'll be a lot of information going on in here. And yeah, it's, it's all very, very easy to access via that icon. Next one along is what I'm calling the toolbox. It's simply the, the menu icon. So 
the reason I call it toolbox is because on the Pro 700 display, um, that's what we called it. You know, it was the, the settings icon on the Pro 700. And you can see a lot of similarities in here to the old Pro 700 toolbox. First thing we'll do is have a look at system. So you can see here we can change the date and time and all the things to do with the display in terms of units and what we've got in here, volume and brightness and things like that. Press back. Data, now this is similar to if we went from the home screen of the Pro 700 into data management in the top right corner, where we can go and um, import and delete all the data within the display. Again, very similar place, as you can see on the right hand side there, we can, we can edit data and we can import and export. Next one is Isobus, so yeah, in the toolbox on the Pro 700 and across the bottom to Isobus or VT it was on the tabs and we can go in and change stuff in there. And there was also TC in the Pro 700 for task controller, well that's in here as well to turn on and off. Connectivity is just another little um, way of getting into the modem settings, but it brings you straight into the AccuSync, which is where we can upload and share jobs between tractors. Obviously, as standard, these are off. It is a subscription for that. Moving across, we've got Tractor. Now, this screen you will recognise because we've been in it quite a few times in previous episodes, and it's all the tractor settings, what we can change within the display. So, as you can see there, look on the right-hand side there, we've simply got the main tractor settings, which is basically your little configurations and saved vehicle configurations. We can set everything to default in this page. On the right hand side we can scroll down to the usual bits and bobs that we've seen before in terms of remotes and rear hitch. A lot of the other stuff I will go into in their own little episodes. Just a quick one, you would normally get to this as, as I have done before with the quick little hydraulic ram button on the armrest brings you straight into this display into the remote. Moving across to implements, so again the old screen Pro 700 it would be in the toolbox and across the bottom to implement which we show implement and in here we can add remove and edit all the implements within the display once we've added one it'll come up on the right hand side down here with measurements and that's where we can go and edit and change all the measurements of the implements the vehicle and implement configuration is basically where we set the work switch source so we can set it to two different ones or we can just have one and this is basically what relays the message to the tractor to tell it when it's in or out of work. What we can also do in here is change the source of speed. So if we were sending a speed to the Isobus implements on the back, we can choose between radar, vehicle wheels or the receiver. Going down one more, this brings us into the GNSS and guidance settings page where we can see all the information and vehicle measurements and calibrations and things like that, all to do with the guidance. Work condition across the bottom is more to do with Isobus. As you can see, it's greyed out on the screen there because we've got, not got an implement selected. But if we were setting up um, metering systems on a drill and it was through Isobus, that's where we would probably set up a controller. So you could also use that task controller of shutting the drill off the headlands and things like that. Activations simply takes you into the page where you can activate parts of the display in terms of unlocks. Diagnostics is more to do obviously with all the diagnostic side of the tractor in terms of um, seeing what's wrong with it and changing settings. And then productivity is all to do with reports and totals in terms of jobs and implement jobs. Moving over to the top right hand side here we have our operation screen which is very very similar to the profile screen what we had on the Pro 700 whether that was in a run screen or you had to go to performance across the bottom tabs to profile it's the exact same screen this time luckily we don't have to have it in a run screen because it's so so easy to get to just by clicking that single farm icon in the top right corner so grow farm field and task and as you can see, look, we can select our implements and our vehicle implement configuration. And there'll be some more information under here if we were connected to Icebus and had some controllers set up. Just so you do know, on these new ones, I will cover this in, obviously, when we're going to the GPS um, menus a little bit further. The task now is the work control instead of the old operation instance. So if you created a new task, it would create a new coverage map. 
press X on there. Obviously, the very top right corner, we've got the um, the main switch for engaging on the guidance lines. Luckily, now we do have a button on the motor controller, so we can do it via there. Bottom left corner, we've got our notifications bell, and this brings up any notifications within the display on the right hand side. As you can see in there, look, it's got the road and switch field mode enabled. So if I plug a USB in, for example, it would come up with a USB stick. If I imported some information or exported, it would tell you that it's completed and that sort of thing. At the very bottom, we've got the usual run screen tabs, which are always visible on the display now. So even if we're in the menus, as we are now, look, we can quickly press on a run screen and go straight to it. We've got seven run screens instead of six. So there's a lot more information we can put within these. And as I've already said, everything's a lot easier to get to instead of pressing back and going to toolbox or back and going to diagnostics and data management, things like that. Everything's a lot easier to get to from the run screens now. And to switch between the run screens, we can either press on the tabs at the bottom like we're always used to, or now on these new ones, we can use this dial on the armrest to flip between them when you're bouncing around in the field. So that's a nice little feature and makes it easy to switch between them. On the very left hand side here, we have the left hand area. In this tab, everything is always visible. Regardless of what screen we are in within the display, we can always see the information down here on the left. And if you scroll down, look, there's a little bit more within there. So you can put a little bit more in there if you wanted to. I've limited it so much to the information what's in there. And basically, put what you want visible in there all the time. So that's a nice little tab to have. Just so you are aware, on these new ones, we are able to have the split screen. So Isobus is turned off at the minute, that's why it's blank, but if we turned Isobus on, you would be able to see your Isobus implement on the right hand side and your GPS screen on the left. If bouncing around the field, you can flip between them just using the dial as well. Data's always there, so these are how I set these up. So data's always in there. You've got your hitch, remote, and then back to your home screen. What I love about this sort of thing, setting up these home screens is, for example, if I wanted to check out my kilometers per litre, which is something I've always been interested in knowing, is I can now get it up in there while I'm driving on the road. In it, this home screen as well, as I've got it set up, I've basically got to most of the common things that I would use day to day when driving around in the tractor, such as the engine brake, I love to use. Work lights is a common thing this time of year. And then we've got the hydraulic top link, automatic pickup pitch, the temperature to set in the cab, engine hours is always a nice one to get up all the time. Our cameras, so we can get all four in here if we wanted, and we can make it full screen by just tapping that button there. When we're in it, look, if we press our little um, cog, we can switch between the four cameras. On this particular tractor, there's only one camera plugged in, but it's all pre-wired for four cameras, so you could buy the DIA kits to put more cameras around the tractor or on your implements. Press the top right of the screen to come back out. Um, so that's a common thing. So if you see the little tab in the top right corner of an app, look, we can press it and open up that tab. Same with the GPS screen, look. So over here in the top right, we can make this map full screen and then we can close it back down to half the screen. Lovely job, guys. That is the basic operations of the Pro 1200. I hope you enjoyed it. hope it's filled you with confidence on how easy these machines are to operate and moving forwards, how easy they are to use. Well, lovely people, that is the four basic episodes sorted for the AFS Connect tractors. What we're going to do now in the next few videos is just raise up to the intermediate level of the advancement side of these tractors. We're going to dive into more of the menus and the display. We're going to probably do some basic GPS work as well as customizing the transmission. We're also going to look at the configurable buttons, which is a fantastic new feature on these tractors. So stay tuned, guys. I'm Ant, and this is Performance.